Columbia for rendezvous. Go ahead for rendezvous. Bill, we've been talking over the situation here with uh, possible contingency rendezvous today, and uh, also been noting how well the science is going with Wake Shield. And we'd like to offer that um, during the previous five days of this flight, we've been getting excellent rest, and, and uh, all of us have been feeling real good towards the end of the day. If it comes down to it, and we do need to rendezvous with Wake Shield today, the crew is ready and willing to stay up uh, almost as late as you'd like to make that happen as late as possible so that uh, Wake Shield can get some more of its mission completed. That's, uh, that's super, uh, Taco, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll throw that into the equation. Um, right now, uh, we're, we're developing uh, some criteria uh, that, will apply, that we will apply at a, around the time of the NC-11 burn. And uh, basically, if it just gives us confidence uh, that, uh, uh, that by tomorrow that you'll have, uh, uh, you know, good distance between uh, Wake Shield and Spies, uh, that's going to be, <coughs> be our desire to... Uh, do exactly what uh, what you said, and that's try to get all the uh, wake shield data. Yeah, we certainly hope we can uh, do the rendezvous on schedule tomorrow. Uh, so just wanted to let you know, we if it has to be today, we can do it as late today as, as possible to make it better. And uh, pass our regards on to Mr. Britz. Hope he's uh, having a good time doing this analysis. Okay, we'll do that. Columbia, Houston, uh, with some words on the big picture. Ready to copy, Mark. Yes, Taco, as you know, uh, FIDO has been uh, taking in some uh, C-band radar tracking data on SPAs for the last few REVs, and the... Uh, the news is encouraging. The separation appears to be growing uh, for the uh, range at TI, at the nominal TI. It's now 12.1 if we assume a worst case KCON of 1.1. So right now it looks as though we're going to be uh, doing a nominal retrieve for wake shield. The only question in our mind is whether or not uh, we'll continue to keep spas in min uh, drag attitude for a little while longer. That is under discussion at this point. Uh, with respect to Wake Shield Retrieve, we will be retrieving at two orbits early, and we will be going with the eight-mile TI, nominal TI distance. Okay. Uh, we copy all the words on the big picture. Sure hope it works out that way and that we can keep both satellites pumping out their science. Uh, with the uh, two revs early, uh, will it be a change to our wake-up time? In Columbia for TACO, uh, that's affirmative. The plan is for you to go to bed an hour earlier and to get up an hour earlier tomorrow. Okay, we understand. We'll start uh, with you, Dr. Musgrave. Uh, how serious are those particle dings on the windshield?
or a couple of centimeters from the pit. Uh, I understand you almost had a super ding with that 4,600-pound uh, superconductor growing uh, satellite. What happened? Was that a case of a thruster malfunctioning or what? Uh, no. What really happened was when we released the uh, wake shield, we waited uh, at least a minute to verify that its attitude control system was functioning normally. And that took a little bit longer than expected to verify that the wake shield was controlling its attitude properly. And while we were waiting, uh, it was drifting ever so slightly towards us, probably due to a small impulse imparted when we moved the robot arm away from the satellite. And so that small closure rate, if we allowed it to drift for minutes, would have carried it closer to the Columbia than we were comfortable with. But in the event, we uh, started the wake shield zone thruster, and that carried it clear of our cockpit. And of course, at any time, we could have moved Columbia out of the way had we thought there was a real collision hazard. But we didn't want to disturb the contamination-free wake side of the satellite, which was going to conduct our science over the next few days. So we tried to hold off any thruster firings, and that's what we were able to do, was let it drift off without any movement by the Columbia at all. If my congressman had his way, we would have no more manned space flight. What are some of the latest and greatest benefits that I can educate him about to try to change his mindset? Well, I like to talk about the wake shield facility that's uh, trailing us now by about 20 nautical miles. It's our uh, prototype chip manufacturing facility. Maybe it's the wave of things to come in space where we'll actually use the resources in space, like the pure vacuum generated by the wake shield, to manufacture either high-quality electronic uh, components like this example or some other um, manufactured product like biomedical supplies, medicines, or pharmaceuticals that would actually directly be sold on Earth. And we'd actually produce them in space, make money up there, make a profit, and that, of course, that would expand our activity in space. So this is the way to go in space exploration, is to find a way to use the space's, space's own resources to benefit us back on Earth. And that's the first step that we're taking here with the wake shield experiment. But uh, does ham radio still play a part in emissions? And if so, is it... Um a vital part, or is it just uh, kind of a recreation thing uh, for ham radio uh, hobbyists? Now, I had the ham radio on uh, 51F, which was close to uh, 11 or 12 years ago. I think it plays uh, two roles. It communicates what space is all about. It lets people vicariously live what is space. It lets people come on board with us. It's also a very valid way of communication. Uh, there are times when I've been a capsule communicator in mission control, and we had long LOSs from the satellite we communicate with, and we have actually gone up to the shuttle through uh, a ham radio operator. I think it's an integral part of uh, the electronic net that we are building. You can see the computers, and you can see uh, the camcorders, which are bringing you information. Maybe in the background you can see all the wires. I think ham radio is part of the integral information net uh, which we are bringing into the shuttle, which is, uh, and it's a way of bringing a 25-year-old technology into this century. Senator and former astronaut John Glenn has volunteered to do geriatric experiments in space. So although you're at 61, not quite up to Mr. Glenn's age, would you be ever interested in that, uh, Dr. Musgrave? Well, of course, they're doing one on me right now. What I wanted to ask, do you do any type of uh, simulations or experiments on the ground on what possibly could go wrong, or do you just keep your focus on your objectives for the flight? Uh, good question. Uh, we spent uh, about nine months training for this flight, all five of us on the crew, and we trained intensively over the last few months especially to handle any kind of emergency, especially during the critical phases of launch and entry. And we often joke, once we arrive in space, when things are going so well as they are on STS-80 here, that a lot of our emergency procedures training seems to have been wasted because we arrive in space here and never have to use all that training that we've uh, uh, spent so many weeks uh, acquiring. But really, uh, that's a necessary uh, part of training for space flight. You've got to be ready just in case something does go wrong. And we view it as an investment in our own safety and in our own success on this mission. I was calling for uh, Ken Cockrell, my brother. Oh, my goodness. This is Ken Cockrell's brother? Yeah, this is Phil. 
<laughs> I believe they, they selected uh, uh, Dr. Jones and Dr. Musgrave to be a part of this, but I suspect they could relay a message. Okay. Oh, oh my, what, what do we have here? I see on the screen here another person has entered the, the picture. Hi, Philip. I'm not part of this event, but uh, go ahead with your question. I just heard about it on the radio the other day, and I thought, well, I'd give it a shot. And I didn't have a question. I just wanted to relay what uh, Miriam thought of the launch. Uh, uh, after you had, uh, after about two minutes had passed, we asked her what she thought, and in her four-year-old four uh, mind, she just said, "Do it again, Uncle Ken." I sure hope she's right. <laughs> I do, too. I, I did have one question for you, though. Okay, go ahead. Uh, I wanted to know if, uh, just before launch, if you roll down the window and shout clear. Thanks, Philip, and no. <laughs> okay, that's what I thought. <laughs>